Hi, I'm Christina Whitney, a Handy Quilter Studio Educator. I'd like to introduce you to a new ruler today. It's the HQ Righty. So if you look at this ruler here, you'll notice that I've already put Handy Grip on it. So Handy Grip is a good safety item that you'd like to use. You'll also want to use a sure foot. You'll notice it has a higher profile to prevent the ruler from hopping over it. The other item for safety that you'll want to use and for stability is the ruler base. Let me show you how we can use the righty in a block. We've got this flying geese design here. You can use the straight edge side, use the wavy side, and again up at the top we used the right angle side. You'll notice however that the block is longer than the actual ruler. So you can stitch and use that ruler lined up with your seam, moving the ruler so that you can get that full length. This is a great ruler. So let's look at some things that we can do with the righty ruler. If we use the righty ruler, and any ruler in that matter, or for that matter, make sure that the writing is the correct direction. If you have your ruler upside down, you won't be able to read the writing, and you won't be able to see the markings as well. So make sure you have your, your ruler positioned properly. And then you'll also notice that on this righty ruler, we have some grid lines that are going across. I'm going to use those grid lines, and I'm going to line them up on my seam or on the grid fabric, and then stitch across, stopping here, shift the ruler over, again using these grid lines, lining it up, stitching up, up, and down and continuing across. Now let's add a little bit to that design. I'm going to make a chevron pattern. So I'm going to start a quarter of an inch below my existing line. Taking my ruler, I'm going to line the edge of the ruler up with my previous stitching making sure I have a nice firm pressure on the ruler base. Stitching up and back down. Shifting the ruler over, lining it up with my previous stitching line. You want to make sure you always have control of your ruler. You'll notice I'm walking my fingers along to maintain that control. So let's move that out of the way so you can see. And again, you can make this lower down so that you have more of a gap in between and play with it. So now we're going to embellish a little bit more, but rather than putting the line directly below, we're going to shift it over. So I'm going to shift it over a quarter of an inch. Okay. Stitching up and stitching down. Shifting the ruler over. And you can also add a third layer or as many layers as you'd like till you get the finished look that you'd like. So with our original design, we just had one layer going all the way across. I came back and just shifted the ruler halfway over and added another triangle there. Then went back in and did little fills. So now I've got this square diamond shape in the center. So that's something else that you can do with that ruler that's kind of fun. Let's move on to one more design over here. You'll notice this one, I use both sides of the ruler. I use the straight side to do our first area. Then I did the wavy side. And then I just did a little bit of the straight side. So let me show you how we did that. So lining up the ruler, I'm going to use this line going across and the center line. Figure out where I need to drop my foot, pull my thread up. Okay. 
reposition the ruler again. And now we're going to slowly go around the curve, hugging the side of the ruler, making sure we're not going off the side, and coming back down to our starting spot. Then I'm going to take the ruler and I'm just going to travel across just a little bit until I get to where I want to stitch the next right angle. So we're going to just add it in there. And that's our next design. Okay, let's have some fun now with the wavy side of the ruler. I've already did a little bit of the design here using the tip of the wavy side, stitching across. And now let me show you how I did the top part. I'm going to rotate the ruler around, and you can see I did half of it, shifted it over, did the next section, and I'll show you how we're going to stitch out this last one here. So again, I'm going to use the grid line, lining it up on my seam or on the grid on this fabric, making sure that the center line comes down through the center point of the previous design. And then we're stitching around. Remember, doing ruler work is not a race. Take your time, be patient. And we're going to finish off down here. So that could look really nice in a sashing, in a border. You could even put it in a block if you want. So with the righty ruler, we've got this wavy side, but it's kind of a short distance. So let me show you how you can lengthen that wave. You'll see we've got grid lines at the high point as well as the low point of the wave. So I'm going to start at the low point and stitch around. And I'm going to stop at another low point, shift the ruler over, matching up again that same low point, and then you can continue on, making that an indefinite length. Okay, let me share one more quick design with you. I call it the arrows. It's just using the right angle, going up and down, and changing the um, distance in between each one. So this one I did about half an inch. You can make them bigger, you can make them smaller, and just shifting over using a traveling line, and you can fill a whole border with that section. I love this ruler. It has so many different uses, so play with it and have fun.